Hey guys, how's it going? There's a lot going on around here today. Benny's crew is here working on the floor installation in the Hartley. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to show you. They think they may finish it by the end of the day. They're about a little over halfway done at this point. But Chad is also on his way out here to start the trenching process from the side of the house about where I'm standing out to the Hartley. We have to trench electrical from here to there, which means huge upheaval to our front entryway or our entryway that we use the most often. And it, it's actually making me a little nervous. The first big project that it's kind of making me like, like I know it needs to be done and it will be awesome in the end, but the process, it's gonna, it's gonna look a lot worse before it looks better. Let me show you the direction this electrical has to come. So clearly side of the house, this is where all the access is. We're gonna trench right here. This will be all hand dug in this area. We're gonna hand dig under the boxwood so that we can save all of that. But then it's gonna go right down so it'll kind of um, come through the edge of this flower bed down the sidewalk let's walk down this way and then straight through this area out to the hartley and then there will be another trench from our well out to the hartley so water will come from here electrical will come from here but that means we have to take up all this concrete which is something that we wanted to do we wanted to remove this because look at how narrow it makes it like it is just shy of i think two feet and especially when the lavender is grown on, I mean, it's very pretty, but it, it does make it feel very neck down. So our goal in the end, we're going to actually move the light to, but we want the walkway to be about as wide as from like this side of the lavender to the other side of the lavender, like making it more than double the width. So it feels very easy for even two people to walk down. And then when we get to the end where you can either go right or left, we're going to widen this too. So instead of it being such a sharp turn one way or the other, like this way, will be widened so it'll just feel nice and easy you know like this will be gone and then you can walk into this area and then once this trench has been made and filled back in chad's going to come back and remove all of this concrete in this area i don't know if you can see with the lighting but it does alternate in color pink gray pink gray and there's a spot right here where one of them's kind of starting to lift up it's kind of a little bit of a toe catcher and we're also going to remove all of these pavers i know that a lot of you are excited for this day <laughs> they were actually installed this way on purpose like the leaning tower of pavers. I don't know at what point they went in, but we're gonna take them out and put in a stack stone wall right here. And this project, we're gonna end at this seam because the rest, it just goes up to our back door. It's like a huge piece. Um, and we'll tackle that later on. But yeah, we're gonna take all of this out and put in, I think bricks in this area, maybe the same stone as we did in the Hartley for like this patio area. I'm not sure, but we'll walk back this way. We wanna marry it. Oh, we're gonna take this up too while we're at it. See, there's big cracks in the sidewalk and we're gonna continue on with the brick that we've been putting in other areas. So we've got the brick walkway here, up there, and over on that side. So yeah, it's gonna be a huge mess. And I think maybe the thing that makes me the most nervous is that I don't have a clear, like a super clear vision of what it's gonna end up being in the end. Like I know we still want seating out at the brick patio. That's the other thing, the brick patio is gonna go as well. Um, we're gonna create some kind of seating out there. The walkway will be wider, but I just don't know like where we're gonna put the exact entrance. I think maybe clearing it out will be helpful so that I see it more as a blank slate and then we can start putting the pieces back together. <sighs> Gotta be brave. I mean, it's all exciting stuff, but I mean, you guys know how it is. When you change something that you're used to, it can be a little nerve wracking. So out here, Paul has been working on taking the pergola down and I, he might be taking the lumber. We'll find a home for the lumber. And then I'm gonna start off this morning by removing our little pallet butterfly garden fence out here. We're gonna be using this out in the cut garden area. And I'll probably pick some of the tulips. I don't know if I'm gonna actually make it to digging them up today, but I'm thinking, I don't know that he actually has to get his machines in here, but it's okay if they have to be cut off at ground level, they'll probably still pop up next year. And I'm really happy we were able to remove most everything that we needed to have removed. I mean, there's a few little daffs at the bottom of this brick raised bed, but honestly, we got like the big daffodils out. We got the hydrangeas out, most of the plants from the whole area that we wanted to have moved, we got moved. So I feel good about that. So all that said, I have no idea what today is gonna hold, except for I need to start by clearing out stuff that I want to keep in the brick patio area. And then we may move on to a little bit of planting. I did pick up a few lilacs that are gorgeous. You guys are gonna love them. They smell so good, they're in full bloom, but I thought we would maybe get those in the ground today if we have time.
turned out pretty. Isn't that a beautiful mix? I ended up having to switch the vase because the first one I picked was way too deep. The stems were too short on these tulips, which I think is due to maybe lack of moisture and then also uh, too mild of a winter. But I had a handful of tulips that I just kind of popped down in the vase first. And then I wove the, I think it's Korean spice, viburnum branches in, which are just budded. They're not even blooming yet, but I love the pink color of their buds. So I usually use branches as the framework, kind of as the frog to hold stems in, but I just did this one kind of backwards and kind of in a, a quick hurry. That was like a five minute arrangement right there. <laughs> but really fun to be able to utilize these tulips. All right, so the fence has been moved. I need to pick up these three stepping stones and the pillar, of course, and Paul got all the fencing down and the pergola minus the uh, beams going up. I think Chad's gonna pull those out because they are buried in concrete, so he'll do a much quicker job of that than we could without you know, the right equipment. Uh, the only things left we have to move out here is this here, which we will probably do with the tractor, I'm guessing when we have more access. And then we've got to move the furniture. And I think we're just gonna pop it behind the greenhouse or the barn for now, just somewhere out of the way until this area has been buttoned back up a little bit and then we'll move it back out. And it actually feels and looks like some kind of weather is coming. Here comes Chad. Oh boy, here we go guys. And we've got this area as clear as we really can get it. Um, so all of this, the brick, stone, all of that will be removed and then the vertical post there and then the fence and then we'll take off down the sidewalk. Those are the outdoor pillows that were on these chairs right here. I need to take those in and wash them. And while Chad's starting on this, we just realized that um, as Erin and I were moving stuff around that we need to get that birch tree in the ground so that one last tree against the back fence, so the back border. We were unable to plant it with the auger because um, there's an active water line really close by that we didn't want to break. So we're gonna hand dig the hole and get that planted and staked because the wind is starting to pick up. Oh, that's gonna be rolling through my flower beds, you guys. Uh. So this tree right Right here back fence line all of the beautiful trees we just got in the ground we're gonna be digging the hole right behind where the root ball is so right in here and then hopefully we can just tip the tree up and slide it right down into the hole and Paul's gonna be working in this area as well he's running a supply line to all of these trees and getting the drip run so we all are in the same spot today yeah. Yeah, those go inside. Oh, <laughs> I need to watch. Like, do you need a mover for these? Yeah. Watch, watch this. <laughs> oh, you're so strong. Yeah. Look at you. So I realized as I was sizing up the tracks on the excavator, how wide they actually are. And I looked at the sidewalk area and realized that they were going to go right over the top of this poor tater tot arborvita and decided that I should just give it a try. Just dig it up really quick, pop it out here in the South Garden, and at least give it a chance to survive. So I'm just gonna put it right here, tucked in kind of by the coral berry shrub. There's echinacea growing in right in front of it. So echinaceas are here, coral berry, prairie fire crab apple that we recently planted. So I think like right here. I think that'll be a good spot to tuck it in. Plus there's already drip over here, which is fantastic.
Oh, I love that. I think it turned out perfect. And tater tot arbs are a perfect accent evergreen. I think the tag said it was supposed to get one to two feet tall and wide. It's definitely bigger than that, which means it was doing well. It liked its spot. So hopefully this quick transplant, hopefully it won't shock or, you know, you never know. But I did use the starter fertilizer, the biotone and some compost that should help. We'll keep it nice and moist. Um, so hopefully I have transplanted tater tots before successfully. In fact, I planted the one that was at the end of that row. So that was kind of capping the end of a row of lavender. And I had one at the other end that was getting way too much shade. So I dug it up last spring and put it by our garden, our vegetable garden, and it's doing really well. It never skipped a beat at all. All right. So now I'm going to go check in with Aaron and see if he's ready to plant that birch tree. He might have shifted gears because they were trying to get that white fence section out and so they were kind of doing a little bit of pan digging so anyway we'll go check it out since we're driving by let me just give you an update on these daffodils frosty snow daffodils the ones we dug out of the top level of the brick raised bed that is being torn out they have done phenomenally well you can see the other container looking every bit as good as this one over there they're actually just starting to like this one looks really good but there are some that are already starting to peter out. We've been enjoying the show for a while now. Super happy with that. So in the time it took me to plant that arborvita, which was not very long, they got the whole fence removed and part of the sidewalk already. So they are moving fast. So Aaron's gonna stay over there for a minute to help out. And I'm going to attempt digging this hole. I don't know how hard the digging is gonna be, so we'll give it a try. Uh, we may end up in the greenhouse. I've got some canna and calla lilies in there that need to be potted up and it is starting to sprinkle a bit. So we'll try this out first. got it in. The digging was not that hard. In fact, the soil was pretty soft back here, which is really nice. We got a whole bunch of rain, sleet, and snow over the past couple of days, and that's really helped a lot of things out. So right now I have the hose on a very slow trickle, just really deeply watering this tree in. And we do plan on, if you look this way, you can see all the trees, you know, the border, the flower bed is going to be really wide and it's going to come this way and it's actually not gonna end until about that post right there because we're gonna be planting something here as well. I just think that this is so pretty. This whole mixed border back here, I'm really thrilled with how it's coming together and we're gonna be you know, popping more stuff in here. I'm thinking like, wouldn't a big old black lace elderberry look beautiful right in here and kind of fill in that space, provide some red. I was gonna put another deciduous tree, something maybe a little bit smaller like maybe something that grows 10 to 15 feet tall and wide right in this space right here. We also have those four flame willows that are sitting out in the south garden. Those were the only four um, minus this birch tree that we didn't plant out of that huge delivery that we got. Uh, so they would look good back here. They would also look good up there, but they would also look good at a friend's house. So I'm just kind of holding off until we go back there to plant again. Now I want to take a look at the berm that we're going to be planting and kind of determine if there's a really good spot for them. Anyway, I think that that is going to be it for my projects today. I need to wrap it up because I've got some other things to go get done. But Aaron has been working on capturing what Chad and his crew are doing up near the house. So I think we'll leave you with that, just kind of show you some of that progress. They did bring the skid steer, I think. I think I see some of the bricks coming up maybe on the patio area. I'm not sure. I am at this point looking forward to that being gone. I know I, I mentioned earlier that I kind of have a love hate with the, the brick patio area, but it's just going to be so much better. I mean, it's sometimes the it takes a mess creating a worse mess to put it back together the way that you want it to be the way that it's more efficient in your own garden. Um, anyway, sometimes though, it's hard to remember that when you're in the midst of kind of the mess part of the project. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.